what I'm doing is I'm putting the wax on one edge, and then as I melt it, I will draw it into the middle. One of the mantras about scraping the wax is if the wax is thin, you win. If the wax is thick, you stick. In 1979, I started working here, and I've enjoyed it so much that I'm still here. I work here because it keeps me in a younger spirit. I get paid by the smiles on the faces of the people that work here. I've been skiing since 1980. Skiing is like flying with your feet still on the ground. It's an experience that unless you do it, you don't understand it. I feel that it keeps me alive. Skiing's skiing, and it doesn't matter, you know, what size hill you're on or, or how fast the lift goes. You know, skiing is skiing, it's the same everywhere you go. Woke up a couple mornings back in 75 and to the sound of chainsaws running. And after a couple of days, I, curiosity got me, so I had to go up there and see what's going on. And I go up there and a couple of my buddies cutting trees down. And and I said, well, what's going on here? You know, you can't be cut here. It's County Park. He said, no, no, there's a developer from Chicago that's going to build a ski hill here. And he's looking for help. All you need is a chainsaw and I can get you a job. <laughs> so I started cutting trees in 1975. Midwest skiers are just, they just love it. You know, they just, they just love to get out there. We're small little hills out here, but man, you got some passionate skiers and riders across the Midwest. Our yo-yo's a little shorter. We go up and down a little bit faster, but you're learning the exact same thing. And everyone that comes here, whether it's our employees or our customers, this is their home hill, and this is where they feel home. You know, it's a mom and pop shop. It's, I, I own this place. I pop the parking lot, I tend bar, I cook in the kitchen. You know, I do what I need to do to make sure this place keeps going. The first time I ever came to Tyrell, I decided to buy Tyrell. <laughs> Saw all the awesome people, all the potential that it had. Hated the idea that it might not be here anymore, so I, I bought it. <laughs> I think it's super special. We were one of the first resorts in the country, and it was guys from the 10th Mountain Division who came back here. And then I think it was 1937 that the ski hill opened. Lutzen is a family resort, always has been, way back in you know, 1948, founded by a 10th Mountain Division skier. Cabrafe was founded as a winter sports area in 1938. In the early 50s, it became a ski area. They started putting in rope toes and I think even T-bars. We have more ski resorts in Wisconsin than they do in Colorado, you know, so that's, that's impressive numbers. You know, Michigan's the same way. You know, so there's just a lot of this great culture of, of Midwest skiing. My folks knew the people who started Tyrell. We started going out to fish dinner on Fridays and one night put us on skis and we climbed our way up the rope toe and it was all just downhill from there pretty much. My brother Paul is the ultimate skier in some ways. Everybody knows him, everybody loves him. Hey Mike. Good, you? Yeah. He can't stop. I'm just the luckiest guy here. That's all I claim. Yeehaw! That's great snow. What I love about skiing is it makes me feel like I'm completely free to do whatever I want to do. I feel like I'm 20 years younger. That's worth it. The older I get, the more worth it that is. <laughs> he is skiing. He's somebody that I would strive to be more like. 
appreciative just to be able to get up and ski every day. Biggest storm of the year? Yeah. That's the Midwest. We get all excited about two, three inches. Well, it's not getting what you want, it's wanting what you got. People keep coming back because it's fun. Where else can you come out, uh, nobody's keeping score, you're there with your family, you're riding it with your kid, you get that time on the chairlift with him. It's just magical, and it's fun, and it's an experience, and it's a positive experience, and they want, they want more of it, and they continue to come back and, and recreate with the people that they love. It's one of those places where you come in and you feel at home. You might not know everyone, but when you get here, they make you feel like you're a family, even though you're far away from home. I've been on ski patrol a total of, I think, 43 years. And when we first transferred here, one of the things that really appealed to us was the fact that Nordic is just such a family-oriented ski hill. The friendships we've made and the friendships that our children have made is second to none. We are the resort that your family can plug a crock pot in, recreate all winter long, and have a good experience. We are the foundation of skiing. Here, this is where I learned how to ski. This is where a lot of great skiers learn how to ski. We had six or seven Olympians coming out from here. That's the Midwest. Well, the best woman skier in the world comes from the Midwest, Lindsay Fon. You take what you got. I mean, golly, you grow up skiing in the Midwest, you can ski anywhere. The people who are at the heart of running this ski resort definitely are a family. If you have a family of people running a ski resort, it feeds off of your guests. And they become like second family members to them, you know. It's a beautiful day, man. I have an eight-year-old son, Ronan. He's my little buddy, you know, and he's the person I want to go skiing with the most. And the president and owner of Granite, he's a very family-oriented man. He encourages the kids to come out and ski. And it's just nice to work with people who yeah. brought their children up skiing because it is fantastic to get out on the slopes and enjoy it with your kid. He's just a joy to, to <laughs> ski with. He goes and finds every little thing to jump off of. He's a terrain park kid, but he definitely loves to ski at all. And I love to watch him. So the Midwest generates skiers. All these small resorts that are near metro areas introduce people to the sport. They get them out there, build that passion for it. We are easy access. They come in for the experience. That is really what makes skiing so special. They're gonna give it soul. They're gonna give it character. Well, it looks like we're all set to go for the customers this morning. Open the doors and Ooh. we will be ready. Private ownership, right? Family ownership, not corporate ownership. It's got more personality, it's got more soul. Yeah, let's go, come on, let's go. It's all here. I know everybody here from the ski ownership right down to the lift operators and, and the people that run the lodges.
It's incredibly convenient. My house is just down the road here. I have access to everything I want, restaurant, bars, friends. What more could you want? Than we the, the soul of Cab Rafe is it's, it's hard to define. I think it's a little, maybe a little quirky. And I think we just attract a lot of really down to earth people who want to ski. An independent resort, it's not unlike your family farm. This is a roll up your sleeves and go to work type of resort. So I think a lot of independent resorts continue to thrive because they're unique. What's unique about Cabrafe's ticketing process is we have a different ticket every day. People definitely collect our tickets. We get pictures of Christmas trees decorated with tickets. People love to collect the tickets. We're skiers here. It's in your blood. You can't avoid it. It's a unique place. It's kind of magical. I love it, and it's all I really know. It's important to have mom and pop ski areas so that everybody has access to skiing and snowboarding, so everybody can get involved and enjoy the sport. So, you know, we're trying to get people into the sport, not discourage them from doing the sport. Tyrol Tuesdays, 20 bucks all day. You know, you don't get that anywhere else. Here, they can come, they can experience it, it makes it very accessible, and it becomes this, like, feeder program to skiing. We want to be all-inclusive of everyone that comes here. One thing that bothers me a little bit is Jerry the Day and Gaper culture. We want everyone that walks up here, no matter how they're dressed, we want them to feel welcome and we want them to have a great experience. And it's important to the Midwest and skiing in general because it's where everyone learns. I became owner of a ski resort uh, in a pretty unconventional way. When I was 22 years old, I found Nordic Mountain for sale on a website. I did everything I could to put money together, and I bought Nordic Mountain right out of college. It was a mixed reaction. People thought I was absolutely crazy. A lot of people laugh. I was against it. I thought he uh, had better opportunities and should go make some money first, which was terrible advice. When we first met Rick, I remember thinking, holy cow, he's 22 years old. And I thought, this is really a huge undertaking. But he just came in and he was confident and he knew what he wanted to do. He really established his credibility as a good, strong owner, manager, leader very, very early on. In my early years, I was barely getting by and uh, just made enough each year to make it to another season. I was working a ton, personally making very little money, but I was having a blast, and it was never work for me. It was passion. This is one of the older ski resorts in the Midwest, Little Switzerland. This place opened and ran continuously until 2007. You know, I look at Little Switzerland and how important that place is to the community, and people were pretty sad to see the ski area go away. My brother Rick owned and operated Nordic Mountain and uh, saw the fun he was having. So when we saw the opportunity to reopen Little Switzerland, we did it together. We hear stories every day of people coming in that grew up here, learned to ski here. The locals are happy that we're open again, and uh, the, the community support has just been really positive so far. This was our usual stomping grounds back four or five, six years ago, whenever it closed. We are just really excited to see what they've done to the place and get back onto the slopes. It's part of the town. It's really a part of the community. 
no day that goes by that you don't walk across someone that says, I remember when I learned to ski here, and let me tell you about that. And now they're here with their kids, or they're here with their, even their grandkids. This is their home hill, and this is where they feel home. This is the oldest rope to that little Switzerland as far as its location. It's all been completely rebuilt. And this one is run by a tractor tire. That's the main drive wheel right here. I remember as a kid, it was a big deal when you could make it up the big deal rope tow. I mean, that's what this one's called here. Tow culture is basically you get towed up and you can session one feature all day, nonstop. It's almost a luxury out here. And the kids can get hot laps all day long and, and refine their skills. That's why you see all the good riders coming out of the Midwest. You can do so many laps so fast. People are calling each other out, watching kids sending jumps and stuff on the rope, and they're screaming, yelling out to their friends. There's kids that are really about skiing here that, you know, wear the full tee hoodie and they're got the whole kit and do rag, but there's kids out here that don't have that and they ski in Carhartt overalls with no poles and rental helmets, just having a blast. You know, it doesn't matter who you are out here, everyone's accepted. Close to the city, there's a high school right over here, so school gets out and a lot of kids just crowd at the park and stay here all night. We're open until 10 o'clock at night, blasting the radio with the lights on. A kid like me would just have a blast all day. I think the reason that kids are so good out here is the independence that this park really brings to you. You know, you can get really good at this if you want to, and seeing that with kids, that they want to get better is awesome. We have adult race leagues in the wintertime here. It's people bashing gates on a midweek night and then slamming home beers. I love beer league. Beer league's so much fun. We have a really good time. They take it kind of serious because they have speed suits on, but then like, you kind of like, you really shouldn't wear a speed suit. But <laughs> they still think that they're going faster because they're wearing the speed suit. But I don't really think they're going any faster because they're wearing the speed suit. And I have a, a great owner here who is really interested in reinvesting in his ski resort. And if you have an idea and you bring it up, he's going to move on it. There's nothing as fun to invest in as skiing. It's what I know, it's what I've developed some expertise in, and it's what I'm passionate about, it's what I love. We're lucky because we get to be in the business of selling fun, like that's our product. People come here to have a great time, and we sell fun, and that, that's really awesome. It's way better than selling widgets. We invest in our businesses because we not only believe in them, but because the demand is there. And if we don't invest in our businesses, that is what's going to drive away the demand. I knew that we had to have a vision for the future and 
Unfortunately, no one in my family would have been able to take on the ski area. Quite a few people came to us and wanted to buy Buck Hill. It was sort of amazing because when we met with them, you could just kind of tell that it, it just wasn't going to work out. I'm an architect by profession and had some ideas and some visions about what we could do. They turned the question around and asked me if I was interested in buying the resort instead. And then Chip and, and Dave came along and it, it was fairly evident that they would carry on the way we would like them to. I think it's part of Minneapolis, it's part of the people who live here. It's their home. I mean, the, the racers that came out of here, the legacy that was created, it's embedded in the community of Burnsville here. We knew we had big shoes to fill. And we could tell that, you know, he could appreciate our legacy that we had built. You could tell he wasn't gonna just let that legacy drop away. And his heart was into it. You know, he was building things in his garage to put up over here and they were just passionate. They saw the vision about how it could take the, uh, the resort to the next level and then just Im improve the, the experience for everybody. It really was a business opportunity to take a resort and transform it into something more than a resort into a, an entertainment destination. I think we've been really lucky to have them. Dave has always had a lot of passion and they were just a perfect answer actually. Lutzen is a big mountain, so it actually feels more like a western destination. And there's four mountains, there's 95 runs, and so it skis differently than the other Midwest hills. And it has a culture to it of, again, just up north where you embrace all that winter is. The history of this resort and my family are very intertwined. My role is Vice President of Finance and Resource Management. Being an athlete was something that I kind of took for granted in high school. It was a huge part of my identity and a huge part of who I was. And when I decided to go to Berkeley for undergrad, I gave all of that up. I ran into an old ski coach. He told me about this event called Ski Across. It had just become an Olympic sport, so I told my parents to their dismay that I was going to be taking off two years. You know, I saw it as an opportunity to chase an Olympic dream in a very small field of women, and also to give myself a chance to get back to the core of who I was, which is an athlete. I did not end up making it to the Olympics, but it was a great experience for me. And honestly, it opened more doors than I could ever have imagined. We had an opportunity. My boyfriend and I moved back. I first brought him here. We pulled up. I brought him around, showed him the gondola, brought him to the top of Eagle Mountain and kind of showed him the view. And he turned to me and he was like, this is a legacy that is something you need to protect and, and something you really need to recognize as really unique. And it, it really gave me a sense of purpose again. Having independence from some of these bigger conglomerates is critical to the future of the ski area industry because it is where people learn to love the sport. Skiing is something that you can do your entire life. You can do it from when you're two years old until you're 100 years old. I love skiing. Every day is a different day here. Some days you see a guy in a crazy helmet. Some days you see a guy in a crazy suit. 
Someday you see some little tiny tots, and they're shooting down a double diamond. Mike, what are you doing? You should be hugging your mom. What? You know, so no day is the same here. Living around this area is unique. There are so many different things. One, Mother Nature. You know that it's gonna be a beautiful day no matter what. Some days you wake up and you look at the sunrise and the sunset. I've never seen lavender in the sky. Here is the only place I've seen lavender in the sky. And I was like... Again, you just have to be here to experience it and live it. The people, whew. Being here so long, you get to know the people, you get to know the culture. You know, I've seen so many things here. It's been phenomenal. So one, Mother Nature, two, the people, and three, the job, the money is good. Hey, why not? <laughs>